put it under the water and then we're going to leave it there we're going to leave it there for a couple of minutes to see what happens this is a very rare occasion seeing <laughs> penny blacks being yep. soaked it's a potentially 750 pound <laughs> item but i thought let's have some fun because flatly is all about fun Well, I, I've, I've been dealing in Great Britain stamps and post history for 38 years. I, I worked for Stanley Gibbons Great Britain Department, 79 to 84. Then I, I went out on my own and I specialise in uh, all things line engraved, of which is this a line engraved stamp, covers, stamps, the unusual. Yeah, if, 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 it's, if it's from 1500 to 1980, I'm interested, buying and selling. Wow. But, yeah, it's great fun. About a year ago, or a couple of years ago, I bought a big collection of Penny Black Plate 6. Uh, 1840 issue, classic, you know, world's first stamp. There's about 300 copies. And one of the items that was in the collection was this, um, this large part wrapper. It's not an envelope, it's not a complete wrapper. It's just a large part wrapper, which has uh, been turned and used between, uh, between Wolverhampton, Bristol, and, uh, and and a third oh and Monmouth. Now on on this large part wrapper is a strip of four penny blacks plate six. But in my opinion, this strip does not belong to the cover. Okay, when I say it doesn't belong, the the, the key aspect is none of the Maltese cross cancellations actually tie the stamp to the cover. They don't overlap. Okay, such as on on this cover here. On this cover here, we, we can see that the, the black Maltese cross clearly overlaps the stamp and the cover, so it's tied, it is clearly genuine. On this, on this piece, we have four Maltese crosses, none of them overlap, so there's a big question about it. So I'm saying, my, my question is, why has it been put on there? All right, it's been put on there to create a piece that is not genuine, to enhance the value. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm, I'm going to put this in uh, the water and we're going to see what happens. Okay, in you go. Let's put it under the water and then we're going to leave it there. We're going to leave it there for a couple of minutes to see what happens. Okay. Now as far as, as I mean, because this would be considered a forgery, right? For a uh, cover. Well, the, the, What's the, the term for it? Okay, the stamps are totally genuine. The wrapper, the writing, the back stamps are totally genuine. Yeah. But the two items, in my opinion, do not belong together. So what, what do so you call it, that? Is that like a? It's, it's just been created, you know, to to, to deceive. It, it would be done to enhance the value. enhance, it, right? To enhance the value. Because four penny blacks as a strip is quite something on its own. It's it's, it's scarce. It's scarce. I mean, th those stamps have faults. Yes, which is why that's they do, true. I think they've been put on the cover to, to cover ah. to cover up the thoughts. Uh, as a, as a strip of four, depending what we find, uh, it would have a value of four hundred to five hundred and fifty pounds, something like that. Perhaps. Okay. Uh, on uh, uh, if a genuine if a genuine strip of four on cover, if the cover was complete, you'd probably be looking at. Uh, Two thousand, two and a half thousand. That's amazing how that just so there's, shoots there's, it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. So, so we can quite see why the the, uh, the the philatelic market actually is is prone is prone to forgery. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow! There we go. There we are. Right. Would anybody like a piece of 1840 waste paper? <laughs> <laughs> right, now there's going to be a bit of glue residue on that. We can, uh -huh. clearly, we can clearly see the stamps are genuine because I don't know whether you can see the, the, the watermark there, the, the small crowns. I don't know whether you, it, it, you can... I, I can see them. Okay. All right. So we've got a strip of four penny blacks. Okay, we've got a bit of got a bit of blotting paper here. We're just going to try and dry it a bit more. It's quite a it's quite a nice looking strip actually. Okay, so I'm gonna, just going to put it between the two two nice clean pieces of white blotting paper, and then we're going to see see what happens. Okay, just going to dry it again. This this will take a couple of minutes.
No, it's, st it's still damp, so we've got to be very careful what we're doing because that's if you're going to damage it, this is the one time when you can put a pair of tweezers through Easily. the paper. Easily, yeah. Okay. It's nice and weak. What, 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 what we've got now is, is a genuine, is a genuine strip of four penny blacks. Okay, the lettered L A L B L C L D. Okay, there were 240 different letterings on the plate. The first stamp on the first row was lettered A A. Uh, the the 12th stamp on the top row was A L. So forth down to T A and T L. 240 different letterings, 240 pennies to the pound. It's really worked out very very well. So. Well, what we've got now is quite a nice strip actually. Uh, LA is just touched at the bottom, it's been cut into. LB, LB looks as if it's just been touched. Just have a look. No, no, no. So, so we've got LA cut into. LB is four very close but clear to good margins. LC, LC is, is got good margins, so does LD. So I, I think what, what we've got is a much better item. In fact, if, if I was to take LA off, I'm not going to, then we'd have a, we'd have a very nice st strip of three. Ooh, actually, okay. Which would probably, there's a slight bend up here, there's a slight little mark up here where there's a little bit of a crease, okay? But it's not really, oh, oh, what, oh ha, 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 ha. Right, okay, now let's, <laughs> what we've got here, right? If we fold it here, we have a tear. Ah. ah, right, okay, we've got a crease and we've got a tear. So one, one reason it's been put on the cover could be to cover up the crease and the tear. Now that dramatically affects the value. You know, without, without the tear and the crease, 750 pounds, perhaps, maybe more. With, with that crease, you're looking at, at half that value, 375 probably most okay yeah, yeah. so th 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 that's the first stage done we're going to do something else to it to see exactly what color that Maltese cross is because it looks black yeah that's black but but, but yeah. I, I don't think it is oh I, I I think a chemical change has happened to it so what what, what I what I like to do now I'd like to let it totally dry okay and then what we're going to do we're going to put it in some we're going to put it in some hydrogen peroxide okay a mild bleaching agent and then we're going to see what happens to the colour of the cancellation. Why okay. on earth are you going to do that? Because Graham, as a human being, I seek the truth. <laughs> and it's as simple as that. <laughs> I got this this used uh, strip of four penny blacks which is now dry uh, and I've also selected s some other stamps that have uh, suffered from sulfurization over the years where the um, impurities in the air have darkened the colors of the stamps and a lot of people think oh it's a rare dark shade but in fact no it's the disc discolorization now that chemical reaction can be reversed by immersion in hydrogen peroxide for a very short time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the strip of four blacks in because I think I think it could improve the appearance. And we're going to put these this this Topney blue in here, which is a very it's a horrible dark shade, a penny empty stamp, and and we're going to see what happens. Then we're going to look at this this strip of four a little bit later. Okay, right. So if we can set the timer for say 30 seconds. Okay. All yeah. right. And this is the impurities of the industrial revolution we're removing, right? That's what we believe, yes. So, <laughs> Brilliant. so I'm going to put some peroxide in, in this ceramic bowl here. Uh, so I'm going to put the strip of four in. Okay, let's put the strip of four in. Yep, now we've got 30 seconds on the clock let's, going. Let's, let's, uh, let's get it right. It's just like watching a, watching a baking program in a way, isn't it? Yes, it smells lovely, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So we've, we, we've put them in the bleach. The line engraved penny black, topney blue and penny red. They are very resilient pieces of paper. What you must do if you use hydrogen peroxide, be very careful because I've got, I've got a little bit on my hands here. Look, it's, it's kind of bleached oh, my no. fingers. Yeah, so that, that's, Gloves. What, that, that's what not to do. Uh, yes. um, right, but, but to, to stop the chemical reaction carrying on yes. you, you have to take the stamps out and put them back into water to, to, to flush clean it them, okay? yep. I, I, I knew a, I, I knew a dealer based in Bristol 
who, uh, who who put a couple of penny blacks into peroxide, forgot all about it, <laughs> and, and and next morning, what do you think he had? A, a strip of white strips of paper. this strip of fork you will see that that is what you call a, a rose red shade a rose red shade this here is a much darker shade much okay. darker yeah, yeah. Now, now that that is the sulfurization okay so we're going to try and see if we can remove that sulfurization by painting on some hydrogen peroxide okay then we're going to leave that on there 30 seconds. I think I already see a difference. So, yeah, um, but then, then what we've got to do, we've got to, we've got to wash it all off. Otherwise, the reaction just keeps on going. Look, you, you can, you can actually see the difference. Yeah, I can totally, eyes. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You basically cleaned the stem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and as and as long, and as long as you um, wipe off the peroxide, mm. we are quite, we're quite okay doing this. I mean, these are very robust pieces of paper. You know, you, you cannot do this to surface printed issues, which are doubly fugitive inks. Okay. Okay. The, these these are ve these are very stable. The, 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 these are very stable inks. You know, from 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 a from a a, a, a master printer, Perkins mm. Bacon. So so now I'm that now I'm washing off. I'm washing off all of the peroxide. Okay. Keep on washing it off. Okay, that's going to be. Oh yeah, and that now we've got a much, we've got a much more attractive stamp. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, if, if if we start to get these other stamps out of the water, we we will see that 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 has got a better shade to it. Oh yeah, that's a nice cleaner blue. This 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 penny halfpenny stamp has come up oh. much, much cleaner. Let's see what happens. Now let's see what happened to this. This strip of four had a brownish Norton's cross That's fascinating. On it. That is fascinating. Okay, now there you are. You've got that a is, red, you've that's got a, a red Maltese, Maltese cross. cross. You, the black Maltese cross. What? The, 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 it's the, a red one originally. It was a red, a red one originally. It's sulfurized to, to appear brown. So if, if anyone offers you a brown Maltese cross, just gotta be very careful. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. That is brilliant. It, it, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's wow. cool. Wow. Yeah. But there's a whole lesson there about looking at items and examining them. Okay, be careful with the peroxide. Can <laughs> be very Absolutely. careful with it. Absolutely, but hydrogen peroxide could be a stamp collector's tool, something that they have in their, you know, yeah, in as, their reach. As long as you're very careful and and you know and, and you reverse the chemical, you stop the chemical reaction. I guess that's really okay. important that and, part. And and, and 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 so what we found out actually is that 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 strip of penny blacks. It, it, it never, it never originated on on that piece. Yeah. It's been put on there. It didn't belong. So you know, we 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 are we are making a real item now. You know, it's it's it, it, it's now a genuine strip of penny blacks with a red Maltese cross. That's fantastic. And this is going to be listed on your site. I now know what defect it's got, so I can describe it accurately and I can price it accurately. Brilliant. Okay. And uh, and, and what I believe is going to happen. Uh, also, is that the, London, the Royal Philatelic Society are going to do an article on on all of this in in, in their journal, the London Flatlist. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, one, one, one of their uh, members of the expert committee has has uh, has asked for, for for this whole story to be publicised within the London Flatlist. Fantastic! So, Terrific. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Bill. It's been if a I, pleasure. If I want to learn more about uh, what you have to offer, Bill Barrel, where do I go? Uh, I've got my website www.barrel.co.uk, or you can email me bill at barrel b a w r e w l dot co dot uk. Right, this has been a fantastic experience. Yes. I'm looking forward to sharing this with my viewers. Thank you so much, okay. Bill. That's a pleasure. All right. Take okay, care. Bye bye. bye, -bye.